Says recording. Good morning, Morning Skate family. Uh, once again, it's a solo brownie mission because it's during the day and my co-host cannot wake up before noon. But I am joined today by uh, some friends of the podcast, some new friends of the podcast, and some people that you guys want to keep on your radar, especially with everything coming down the pike for Northeastern. So first up, friend of the podcast, Kelly Dyer Hayes, back again, round two. You guys know the stats, two-time NU Hall of Famer, four-time Beanpot Champ, Beanpot Hall of Fame, the third woman to the third woman to play men's pro hockey, not a big deal. Four-time member of the US national team and probably the biggest Ken Dryden fan I know who I'm guessing was in the ocean sometime this morning. Uh, Kelly is here along with Linda Lundergan, uh, two-time Boston Marathon runner, which I mean, oh. insanity right there. Melrose High Hall of Fame, Beanpot Hall of Fame. Uh, two-time Beanpot champ as a player and two-time champ as a coach, uh, five-year hockey player at NU, also double double threat field hockey, uh, named to the America All East Linda. tournament team, uh, 10 years behind the bench for Northeastern and let Dave Flint goof off during the Olympics in Vancouver, took over for him then. Uh, UMass Boston created the program, uh, USA Hockey U22 and Girls Select Camps. Followed on Twitter by Hillary Knight. Not a big deal. I think that's kind of cool, Linda. And then, uh, oh, you didn't know. And then finally, uh, Mary Ciampa, uh, the founder and CEO of Women X, Boston Museum of Science Board, the Berkeley College of Music Advisory Board, Northeastern grad, founder of ThinkMap, Ironman triathlon completion, which you think the marathon's bad. Uh, and supposedly, I've heard she wants to drive a tractor trailer. Uh, and on, Where did you hear that one from? <laughs> and on Mary, on your Instagram, uh, Twitter, you were followed by Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. And this, as impressive as that is, you're also followed by G Love. G Love, I love G Love. G Love, is I know him. I've, been to, I've probably been to 40 of his shows, if not more. And out of the beach, Comer. Yeah, everywhere, yep. everywhere. Yeah, I even went to Lupo's and risked my life to go watch him once. Um, so, yeah. So, thank you guys all for joining us on this dreary Saturday morning. Uh, but let's talk Let's talk Women X first and how it ties into the bean pod. Uh, Mary, I'm going to defer to you. This is your... Sure. So, um, I'm an entrepreneur, and this is my third startup, and I've found my purpose. Gender equity has always been something important to me. I was raised by a single mom and she was a strong woman in my life. And she set an example of what is possible. And over my, I don't know, I'm 54 now, mm -hmm. um, 54 years, I've realized that women who learn in women only learning environments are able to break through the glass ceiling. So with that in mind and my background in technology and education, I started a bilingual charter school in Hoboken, New Jersey. Um, I really wanted to ensure that women had access to education throughout their lives. Knowledge empowers us to have agency over ourselves and our, you know, you can't take knowledge away from us, right? You can, you can take our rights, but you can't take our knowledge and education, and that empowers us to have agency. So Women X is really disrupt disrupting the educational landscape. And we have knowledge gaps that ignore women's contributions. And in order for us to really make progress, we need to include those contributions and we need to inspire others to really reach their full potential and achieve things that, you know, we didn't think were possible. And so one of our projects that we work on every year is an art calendar where we profile a woman trailblazer, current and past. And for the anniversary of Title IX, we did 
Title IX Trailblazers. And sitting right next to me is <laughs> Kelly, and she is a Title IX Trailblazer for my alma mater, Northeastern. And when I heard her story, I thought immediately we had to do her. So this is the artwork that was created by uh, oh, that's awesome. KP. And when uh, Colleen Coyne, who introduced me to Kelly's background, posted this image, Kelly was blown away. And maybe you can share what it was like. Did you have. not Did you not know about it before it was posted, Kelly? That's correct. Yeah. Um, Colleen one morning said, hey, I want to share this with you, you know, on text. And I was like, oh, my goodness, where did that come from? And she gave me a, just a brief history of Women X and Mary. And I said, oh, please share her contact. You know, I want to say thank you. And uh, I always say never underestimate the power of a thank you. Um, and then with that, we ended up meeting and then we did a TED talk. And then one thing just led to another and it's really been a wonderful working relationship and also friendship. Oh, that's great. So uh, that's how I got introduced to Kelly. And just she to get, back up a minute. Yet or no? Pardon? Did she get you on skates yet? No, she hasn't. <laughs> hey, we have pond ice now. We can do it anywhere. <laughs> I love pond ice. That's funny. Yeah. And so um, the relevance of Title IX to me uh, is really important because I started Women X on the anniversary of Title IX because of what it did for women in education, not really knowing the impact of women in sports. But during the 50th anniversary, we really started to celebrate women in sports. And now it makes sense to me is that, you know, 1972, Title IX passed. Then you had four years later, you had women athletes who had these scholarships and had these teams where they, you know, really perfected their sport. And then they wanted to play pro. And so the first um, pro leagues for basketball started. And then, you know, you had a whole industry grow out of college athletics. And I think it's really exciting because 50 years later, we're really starting to see the fruits of all of that. And now we have many uh, professional sports leagues starting and growing. And that's really exciting. Well, and we talk about representation and there's nothing better than like when I saw you guys at the PWHL game, all the kids in the stands, all the young girls that get to see women playing and playing at a high level and it's their job. It's not hey, I got to get out of here and make my shift somewhere else. This is what they do. And I think that's a big deal. My daughter, it's a big deal for her. She loves going to the Husky games. Yeah, and it's, it's you know, we always say just to, to believe it, you have to see it. Yeah. And for those trailblazers who didn't have someone that they could look to, we need to honor them because they paved the way. They're real, true trailblazers. They yep. just thought, I can do anything, right? And they go and do it. And we need to know who they are. We yep. can't know how far we can go if we don't know how far we've come. Oh, I like that one. Every time uh, when you talk, I, I envision like T-shirts. You know what I mean? Like disrupt the paradigm. You know what I mean? And you know, I just all these all these slogans would be great shirts. Yeah. Look out, no, because Mary Mary likes to create things. So <laughs> that might be coming next. <laughs> Good on. Our slogan when we created the women's line of hockey equipment at Louisville Slugger, which is Louisville Hockey, was "Don't tell me what I can't do." Yeah. Um, we did. We put it on a T-shirt. You know, it was on our hang tags of our product and our brochures. But the T-shirts went crazy. And at the anniversary of Title IX, I posted a picture of the T-shirt. And oh my God, the flurry of information! Like I still have mine. I yeah. still wear mine. I'm like that was a long time ago. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a pretty powerful statement. Well, like the play, the play like a girl uh, uh, campaign. How it how it took that you play like a girl and spun it and made it a, a positive, you know, it's fantastic. You know, I actually use it all the time in the write-ups. I'm like, play like a girl indeed. You know what I mean? Talking about the Huskies and, and the PWHL, I just think it's great. And Linda, how'd you get involved? Well, um, I've known Kelly since I was a freshman in college. I was going to say, um, you guys, did you guys overlap? 
not playing. No, but thank you for asking. <laughs> um, Kelly was coaching uh, when I was oh, freshman. Okay. Yeah, she stuck around for a little while after, you know, and I think, was it your, your fifth year or was it just beyond that, Kelly? I can't remember. Yeah, I stayed for three years after I graduated. Yeah. yeah, so I've known Kelly for a while, obviously, um, and we've stayed in touch through our Northeastern connection. And uh, more recently, <clears throat> I feel like it might have been last year even, Kel, you had met Mary and said, you got to meet Mary. Every time we were going to be at a game together, if there was an opportunity, she was waiting for the time where she could introduce me to Mary um, and tell me about that. And I would, I was kind of following along with what they were doing and trying to get into some of the Title IX stuff at Northeastern that they were doing. And um, sure enough, this came up and, uh, you know, Mary linked up arms with Kelly and said, hey, we got to get some people and we got to do this. And we're going to, I'm going to make this my personal mission to sell this out. And who can we ask? And Kelly reached out to me and said, do you want to be a part of this? So, um, you know, since that time, similar, I've been able to, fortunately this past week, as I told you before we got on here, when we were chatting, Brownie, um, you know, came out to the Beanpot this week, uh, was able to, you know, shack up at Mary's house and she hosted me and uh, we spent some time together and we did an interview on Wednesday and that was really great. So I couldn't be more um, appreciative of being a part of it and coming from this lens. Um, one of the big things I keep saying is, um, you know, this is more than just for the bean pot anyway. And in all of this, it's more than just about a women's hockey event. Um, and it's more than about a women's sporting event. It's a, it's a Boston tradition. Yeah. Um, and we pulled that lens out a lot. You know, I don't know if we would have um, focused the way we have here if we didn't have the lens of Mary and coming in this way, looking at it and saying, um, you know, let that it shouldn't just be little girls coming. It should be little boys. It should be yeah. parents. It should be beer league players. It should be anybody that wants to be a part of it. So um, that's my kind of like, you know, that's, we, I got involved with these guys for this and I'm not going anywhere. I like, I like all this stuff. I'm really latching onto it and it's really, really been great. Oh, that's awesome. It's funny you say that Linda, because one of the things that when we were at TD garden for the banner raising of the women's bean pot, which was very emotional and ceremonial and to honor the past like they did in such a wonderful way because of Linda's suggestion um, was beautiful. And I was texting the basketball group that I have, the, the legends, and they were so excited for you all. They were so excited that the past was being honored and that's something in general that I think is wonderful is bringing these communities together that have trailblazed on their own and honoring each other and how that, how much that means to get your flowers today rather than after you're gone. Oh, and, for sure. and we felt that in the, in, with the women who came, right? Yeah, that's another really powerful. Another t-shirt. Right? <laughs> you're gonna have a full line you're gonna be like life is good, like, woman x <laughs> um that was a very powerful occasion and to see like the fans and the, the excitement of it you know we didn't really know what to expect but i mean it was we were really well received people were just thrilled um the excitement level was high gave us a time to educate and inform as well um and actually mary again she's got a great perspective on things is that you know, I woke up thinking, okay, this is what we need to do. This is the agenda for the day. This is what we want to accomplish. Um, you know, these are the things we should be cognizant of. And Mary's like, well, well, let's take a moment and remember, you know, your time and the athletes that came before you and how we got here. And I was like, thank you, Mary, because you just brought me back down to, you know, a deeper emotional side of, of this and not just looking at the X's and O's. Yeah, it's funny you say how they how the basketball supports it. It's not surprising to me because one thing that's been constant through all my I mean, my limited exposure to Northeastern and the players and the team is 
yeah, they're women and young women playing a sport, but they're D1 athletes. And they went through the same struggles as Sidney Crosby went through, or, you know, probably even more because they didn't have the facilities. They didn't have the ice time. They didn't have the support staff. I mean, you don't even get me started on the TV coverage, but, um, <laughs> you know, it, it's, and it's almost like it was a harder hill to climb. And I think that most athletes that have gone through a similar path understand how easy to a degree they've had it. And they understand the struggles that some other programs and people have uh, had to go through to get to the same spot. You got to, you know, work twice as hard to get half as far. Right. And it's, it's true. And it's, I think it's, it's it, like I said, I've only been involved with it the last you know number of years and just to see the growth in five, six years is phenomenal. So for and I, like when Kelly would came on the podcast, I told her I remembered in the Globe article when she when she played for the men's team in like 19, we'll say 1995, Kelly. Right. <laughs> and uh, and I just remember those articles, how like and that was, you know, back then. And look how far it's come. So it's yeah, it's fantastic. I'm really glad to have us the smallest role possible in this and helping promote it and everything we can do to uh, to, like we say, fill the garden. Right. That's the goal. And and BPU. Raise the trophy. Raise the trophy. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so what what became the uh, what was the thought process to get to throw it all in with the uh, bean pot? What was the bean pot because of the landmark of it or because of your connection with Northeastern? How did that all come to fruition? Uh, well, the bean pot is a magical tournament for our community. And when I was at Northeastern, I went to the bean pot, loved it. Just wanted the same for our women. And I remember sitting in the garden last year at the men's game, you know, Northeastern sweeped mm -hmm. and just sitting there with excitement thinking, this is what our women deserve. This, I want to see our women here. And okay. I just put it out in the universe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, we're going to be here someday. And that day came next year. <laughs> and I was like, I can't believe this. So when I saw it, um, I think it was right away, like a couple months later, they, they announced it. But then there was nothing. Yeah. And then I saw in August, uh, Nebraska volleyball tournament had oh, nine right, right, right. thousand attendees and i thought come on this is the garden <laughs> we can do this boston's competitive i was really inspired by that and hockey and, versus volleyball i feel like there's a bigger draw for hockey in this area <laughs> yeah exactly so i thought we can do it and i started contacting the garden just getting information on ticket sales and what they had planned. And I also kind of researched how the volley, yeah, how they did it in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, the first person I thought of to team up with was Kelly and Kelly brought Linda and we started this campaign, Boston unites. Let's fill the garden. Let's <laughs> make history together. And then we, Kelly's idea was to go and get an advocate from every university and really be our uh, inside person who could tell us what they were doing and how we could support them. And we met every Tuesday night um, around the time of, you know, when the bean pot will be mm -hmm. played and really just worked as a team. I think there was Linda brought in a ton of people. Um, talk about contacts. Linda is the connector. You want to share a little bit? Um, I definitely have a lot of numbers in my phone and I'm not afraid to use it. Um, I, I think one, of, but I really gave a lot of thought to, um, you know, obviously you could invite everybody and have the masses and think about all, but I really tried to think very hard about this. Like who wasn't just going to give us lip service, you know, because this has been boots on the ground oh, and every person that we brought in in some way, shape or form, um, Brian, we, I, Brian Drosher from BU, he's been on the calls with us. He's been helping a ton uh, because, you know, their coaching staff is a little busy. 
Yeah. Um, and he's got the connections too. Um, you know, and, and one of our alumni, Caroline Healy at Northeastern. I mean, we brought various people in, uh, Allison Quant Westgate from BC. But again, those were all thinking of them, you know, just who's going to come on and, and then leave with an action item and, and truly do it. Um, and that's, that's the only way we would have gotten this off the ground. If we had just met every Tuesday and wished that something would happen. Right. Um, so it's been a ton of work. Yeah. And, um, so appreciative of those people in the background that, um, have been joining our calls and giving ideas. And that's the other thing, you know, I mean, everybody, it's not just our three ideas, you know, we're running around and pitching them to TD Garden. But I will also say in the in the grand scheme of this, the TD Garden has been all ears to us, all ears. They've every almost everything that we've thrown at them, they've either just implemented or taken some shape of it and said, this is a good idea. How can we do this? So, um, yeah, it's uh it's all about asking. I, I feel truly my personality is this for better or worse, that you just can't be afraid to ask. Yeah. And so that's really what I did with a lot of my contacts going into this. It, what, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say one of the things that to build on what Linda was saying is that in the past when, you know, we've tried to do things similar to really push and get support for women um, you'd had to find the male ally, mm -hmm. right? Who was like, yes, I'm going to push forward for this group. And this time now we have a lot of women allies who are at the C-suites and can make the decisions and can say, yes, we're going to do this. And that was TD Garden. We had a group of women who were like, we're going to make this happen and welcomed us in. They've been phenomenal to work with and just really open to ideas, supporting almost every idea we've had. So it's really been a wonderful partnership with them. That was gonna be my ask, was there too. specific people at TD Garden that you wanted to give some shine to? Um, just on a, on a bigger scope, but sort of like coming from the team sports and it's interesting just to see how it's evolved, become a team. You know, they almost brought the three of us in as advisors of, women's hockey to the conjunction of TD Garden and the Boston Bruins. Uh, but again, like Linda and Mary had mentioned, like the, the respect and the response for every idea that we had uh, was favorable. Um, so it was really great to have a, like a true working relationship. And, you know, we were all for the good of the event, which was really cool to sort of step back and kind of see this, like we're all pulling and pushing for, you know, the same end goal here. Yeah, the TD Garden actually started following us when we started talking about it, which was great for us because my, my co-host was like, I don't know what's happening, but TD Garden's following us. And, and I'm like, well, stop saying <laughs> stupid stuff then. <laughs> yeah, smart let's keep, that, let's keep that relationship going. Yeah, I mean, uh, they've been uh, super receptive. Uh, they've pretty much rolled out the red carpet for the event. Uh, I think that they... I, I, my feeling is that there was a lot of people there that were pushing for this prior. And this was something that I think was on like a, I don't know, not a wish list, but kind of one of those things to do. And they wanted to get this done. And I think everything just kind of coalesced at the right time. Yeah, and it worked this, out. this goes back, I mean, 10 plus years yeah. of talking about it. Um, I had a conversation, someone who reached out to me uh, when the first Globe article came out, um, was Peter Roby um, from Northeastern. He reached out the minute he saw it and said, geez, I didn't know you were involved in this. I, of course I should have known and what's going on and how can I help? And we were talking about it. He, during his time as AD at Northeastern, we were trying to get this to happen. And then COVID came around and, you know, so this has been a long time coming. Um, yeah. For every overnight success, right? There's, there's <laughs> years and years of, of work and hard work that's gone into it. Like Mary, what you were saying about the leagues that came before, I mean, you're standing on the shoulders of the ideas and the hard work of the people that came before you. And it's a similar, similar process. No, I, I, I think it's a long time coming. And I know Kelly, when you were on, we talked about this, you have to kind of temper it <clears throat> as like, we're here now, 
let's not get mad about how long let's be happy that it's happening and let's move forward and that's like a mindset that i've had to because sometimes when i'm writing it i'm all you know on the typewriter like oh not typewriter on the no, talk about aging or something <laughs> on the uh, on the laptop and you know you get mad and then it's like well no let's be positive you know for what we're at you know yeah for all of us after we had the banner raising on um that Monday, all of our social medias were just blowing up, but it was Maria Dennis, who was my teammate on the U.S. team in 90. She said it best, you know, we'll celebrate this, but keeping our checklist of to do's yeah. next. Um, yeah. And I thought that was beautifully said. Yeah. I, I've Kendall Coin has said some stuff uh, about the PWHL, similar, yeah. similar, like, listen, that's great. We're here, but let's not lose sight of everything else, you know? And, you know, it's, I think that's accurate. I think that's the right way to look at it. You're grateful for it and happy for it. But at the same time, we're not done. Right. And that's, that's the impetus right there. There's no time. I mean, there's no time to focus on anything, but uh, making this a success and having it be a first class event, having everybody who's been a part of this tournament feel it. Um, whether they're hopefully watching it or hopefully in the building. Um, there's just no time to look at, yeah, I have to curb myself a lot. You know, when I start to, the, have, the haves versus the have nots, it, it ha need, needs to take a break for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm a, ha a, what is it, glass half full person. Yeah. I'm always trying to see the positive. What's the point? We have enough negativity. Right. No, that's right. Fair. And, <laughs> and to me, this is, this is an amazing thing to uh, event and just way to kick off a year and to celebrate, you know, just what our, our Boston sports community and our athletes, you know, these are just elite athletes Yeah, and to watch them on the ice. And one of the most exciting things about last Tuesday was I really felt it. The athletes show up and compete differently at this game. Like wow. they bring their best selves. And it's so cool because anybody could win. Hmm. You know, BC was favored and B took it. Right. And um I think Harvard only had like three to five wins on the season. And they they, they held hung it. in there the whole game against Northeastern. They held it. I, yeah. I I thought it was going to be shootout, and they yeah. were playing so hard. It I was, it was exciting. It was That's really what's scary exciting. about it. That's what's yeah. awesome and scary about it. That Northeastern game at the end, I'm like, oh, I don't like this desperation. Yeah. Anything can happen here. This, you know. So, and if you just wear them out, right? It's, it's <laughs> that one little slip. I mean, wow. you know, you're a goaltender. Yeah. I was going to comment that a few times, just simply goaltending. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Goalie you. That's right. Yeah, we just had Phillips on. She was great. We actually, she was on the, the night before. morning before, the afternoon before. Yeah, before the game. And I was like, are you sure she wants to come on? And they're like, yeah, it's Gwen. She's fine. And yeah. cool as a cucumber, that one, man. I, I don't know how she does it. But it, yeah, the beauty, like I think, Linda, you said it, the beauty and the horror of the bean pot is that it doesn't matter the records going in. It doesn't matter the history. Every game, every puck drop, it's a brand new start. And it's it's literally could be chaos at any moment. And that, which is true about all hockey games to a degree. But I feel like that these four schools really buy in for this tournament and everyone it's you can do whatever you want, but if you win the bean pot that year, that's a big deal. And you guys can speak to it better than me. You guys won the bean pot. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I think um, the the anxiety and the <laughs> what you feel during a beanpot game when it's close and it's tight, especially in the title game, I, I liken it to how I felt um, when we played Duluth and beat them in overtime at the Frozen Four. Like my heart was just coming through my chest, like I was in the building. And and then when we played Wisconsin and we lost in overtime, like both of those feelings are just like what the beanpot feels like in the title game, and that's the that's the highest skill for them. Right. Yeah. So they, they, pro they undoubtedly feel the same for the players. Right. Yeah. That, well, I was going to say, you have that feeling in the stands. <laughs> yeah. You have that feeling in the stands. So imagine what these players feel in yeah. these games, you know? Yeah. And especially think of the freshman class. They've heard all the stories, they know the history, and then they walk in in their first year, they're playing in the Beanpot Championship at the TD Garden. Right. I mean, that's got to be like a, 
what, what, what just happened kind of thing, you know, a little to a degree. I mean, I can imagine I, I got to skate on the old garden ice once for like a promotional thing. And I like scooped up off my skates and saved it in a <laughs> Ziploc bag. So I can imagine what it's like. You know, my mom threw it away. She didn't know what it was, but I've gotten over it kind of. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great event. It's a unique event. It's one of those college sport events that you see in, in other sports around the country that, that have, all the history, the drama, the allure to it, and uh, you know, to to be in it like you guys are is fantastic. Yeah, Linda, can you share that moment the when you were a coach that you said was just phenomenal? That that clip that you shared. 2012. With me? Yeah. So in 2012, we were at BU, um, and again, you know, 2012, we had Kendall. Um, but you know, and we were starting to turn the corner, but we weren't quite there yet. And, and you can't measure the four teams when that time comes, like you said, one year, remember it, all four teams were in the top 10, which is, you know, the constellation becomes no slouch yeah. because it's an important game for right. your rankings. Right. So, um, but this 2012 game, we were at BU. We were in overtime. The game was crazy. It was like BU scored, then we scored, then we BU scored. Not much time left, and we scored with under a minute to send it into overtime. And it was just, it, I mean, it took years off my life. Um, it was so. I, I remember standing on the bench and my knees were shaking. I mean, that's a cold rink too, but I. It was intense emotionally, um, and. You know, those players, again, credit to them. They're just cool as a cucumber in these moments and they how they pull off and function and execute these plays. Kendall, I think she um, she blocked – she kind of blocked something along the boards when the, when they were trying to dump it deep, and it went off her, and she went down two-on-one with Casey Pickett um, and just slid it over to Pickett at the right time, right as the defender, like, was coming over to commit. Just sent a nice soft pass over there. Pickett scores – we win 2012. We haven't won since 98. Um, I have a video I shared with Mary of one of our athletic administrators in the stands and he got it. Oh. So I, I have the clip and of the two on one. And it's very loud because Walter Brown's like a tin box. It's, yeah. you know, it's, um, she scores and you hear, you hear Mike, it's Mike Windsor. You hear him go, Oh my God. And then he pans his, his phone over and Peter Roby is running down the aisle, fist pumping, just, <laughs> like, just triple quadruple fist pump. Um, I get chills just telling you this because I have the video and I watch it sometimes. Usually around bean pot time, I usually put it on Facebook or something just to get people going. I was gonna say send it to me and I'll put it out on the morning skate stuff. Yeah, I'll send yeah. it to you. That'd be that'd be cool. Yeah, because I, I I know people here get it, but people around the country don't get it. And what's yeah. nice too, I saw that um, the championship game is being carried by TSN. I don't know if yeah, you guys saw, I saw that. that. That's so awesome. that means all of Canada is going to be able to watch the champ the championship round, and, and I think the consolation round as well. I think both all all Tuesday's games are on TSN as well. Yeah, so I think the Garden team shared with us, so it's going to be on uh, Nesson, yep. um, ESPN Plus, and TSN Plus. Yeah, yeah that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, excellent coverage. Yeah, it should be great coverage. And it's uh, the, we, you were talking about how um, the drama of it, and the other thing that sticks out to me about the Bean Pot is that it's very reminiscent. And look, I've only watched. Maybe you, Kelly, you can answer this more. It's uh, it's very reminiscent of the Olympic Games. Uh, to me, like the the bronze medal game, so the consolation round, you win the bronze, right, in the Olympics. You win the consolation. You win third place. You lose the silver, and you lose the runner-up. Yeah. It's a it's a whole different vibe. And for those that are have not been to the bean pot, and I hope that you're going on Tuesday, go to the consolation game, too, because that game between uh, BC and Harvard is going to be lights out. And you'll see – that these players aren't going through the motions because it's the consolation game. They want to win that game also to, you know, pull, you don't want to lose two in the bean pot, put it that way, you know? Right. Yeah. So you guys have been on that end of it too. You've seen the consolation games. You've been in the building for them. You know, Kelly, you didn't play in one, but you know, <laughs> you've seen them. And it's like I said, pound for pound, the entertainment hockey value for this event is through the roof. You can't, you can't beat it in my opinion. 
We all agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, when everybody's quiet, that means I must have said something right. Yeah. Or, or hall of, hall We're all of, nodding our head. You yeah. can't hear that on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> or I could have said something horribly wrong and everybody muted themselves, one or the other. <laughs> so do you want to tell uh, about the tickets, the all that info? Do you guys have that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so you can... We have a special deal with Women X where mm -hmm. tickets are sixteen fifty. Um, they can DM me on any of the socials, Women X community on IG, on LinkedIn. It's Women X. Uh, they can email me at mary at womenx.org. They can just reach out. And, you know, what I'm excited about for this event is – you know, it's great to have the TV coverage for people who aren't in the community. <clears throat> but for people who are here, this event, the electricity that's going to be happening in that room to come feel that, that's going to be something you're going to take on, not only out of, you know, for that night, but for the rest of the year mm -hmm. and for years to come. There, there's never, what did you say, Linda? There's only one first, right? Yeah, there's and only one chance to do it, do it the first time, right? Yeah. And um, it's it's that electricity, that, that energy you can't get from a two-dimensional TV, right? You can get it only if you are in that arena. And so if you are in the area you know, come. I mean, we have people coming from D.C. We have people coming from the West Coast. Come to this event because it's going to be history in the making. You're going to remember this for years to come. Your children will be able to say, yeah, I was there. I was mm -hmm. at TD Garden. Yeah. And um, some of them, I've been speaking to people and, and they said, I don't, I've never brought my kids to TD Garden. This is an opportunity for them to experience TD Garden. It's, it's an incredible arena. So I'm excited. Purchase your tickets now while they last because we're going to get butts in the seats. <laughs> and when you, you mentioned the TD Garden, this is a great chance to experience TD Garden without the chaos of a professional like the Celtics or the Bruins. And it's, it's a very... For women's hockey, especially, it's a very positive crowd. It's a very upbeat and welcoming uh, environment. And uh, I, I don't think there's a person listening that has kids that has to worry about their kids going to this event like some others. So you get I, to school bands. Yeah, the awesome. band's gonna be there. That's right. They're really I, that's good. One of the <laughs> best <laughs> parts of the bands. Yeah, yeah, the bands being there. Yeah, the uh, the doghouse always represents too well at, at these. Right. Yeah, Fair and the band. I, I feel like. Um, Actually, the two teams in the final, BU and Northeastern, their bands are usually the most well represented. So that's that's something I forgot. I did we didn't we've been talking all this time, I don't even mention that. That's one of those other unique things to college hockey is the bands in the building. So it's not piped in music, it's the band playing. It's fantastic. It really yeah. rocks the building and, and charges that energy. Yeah, it makes a big difference. Big and actually Phillips was telling me she loves the other team's fans. <laughs> She's like when I love it when they boo me. So be you. There's your challenge. <laughs> Get Gwyneth on her game and boo her as much as you want. Well, I, I I can't thank you guys enough for taking the time. I hope everyone gets out to TD Garden. Uh, Mary will talk offline about G Love and how you can introduce me. Um, and uh, hey, Brownie, can I just add something? Yeah, you absolutely. Like? Um, I do want to also share um, what what some of our efforts, what we're doing uh, to honor the past. And one important piece is about the Beanpot Hall of Famers. So you saw oh, that. Man, man. You saw, that's okay. I just want to, I want to share it because. I had it on my as, as a, um, <laughs> you know, as a, as a plug for that group and the, these people, any Beanpot alumni really, because it's all those who came before. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, in another place where TD Garden has been very open, you saw the banner raising, those were Beanpot, you know, Hall of Famers um, as a part of that. And they've been very um, open to, uh, they provided all our Beanpot Hall of Famers with some comp tickets to come in um, with some guests. And uh, we're going to uh, be able to be a part of the um, this year's induction 
Um, so yeah, we're going to be visible and hopefully be a part and be able to sort of welcome in the four inductees this year, um, which will happen after the first period during the first intermission of the championship game. So it'll be a, a few things. So I think they're looking to start it pretty quickly after the teams get off the ice. Um, and yeah, they're just, it, it's, it's really been, um, a wonderful thing to be able to include them in that this group and bring them together and have them be visible and honor them. They're going to do all kinds of things like run the names in the ring all the way around the, the rink. And um, they're providing us some, um, ex, you know, exclusive places to hang out for being pot alumni, all of those things. So I just want to say that those are efforts we're making because not just because it's the first time, but we really want to do it right and make sure we honor, you know, the past in that way at this game. And a lot of these bean pot hall of famers, not only were, you know, champions, they went on to play for Team USA in the Olympics. And so it's going to be a stadium full of really hockey legends. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've got 26 out of 50 ish um, current, like there are 50 ish in the Hall of Fame for women's uh, bean pot. And I, we've got a RSVP from about 26 of them. So half oh, fantastic. in the building. So. So what I'm hearing is, Brownie, bring a whole stack of business cards to get people on the podcast. That's what I'm 100%. Hearing. And give them to us if you want. We'll hand them out. <laughs> well, uh, so uh, womenx.org is the website. Uh, the bean pot puck drop is 5 o'clock for the first game. Uh, everyone, I think the door is open at 4, I believe. So get in there, get cozy, get some concessions, wander around. There's all kinds of stuff to view at TD Garden. There's all kinds of history there. They ha do a really good job in celebrating the past, like you said. Uh, and remember, that's the ice that Berg Bergeron used to skate on. So mm -hmm. you might want to get there and see that. Um, well, thank you guys again for coming. I look forward to seeing you all on Tuesday. Linda, meeting you in person, uh, you know, and Mary. Oh, no, we met at PWHL, Mary. That's right. Um, and uh, having uh, just a time. I am very excited. I, I'm i not going to go to the press box until the Northeastern game. I think I'm going to just wander around and soak in the vibes for the first game. That's my plan. So, yeah, it should be fun. I'm really looking forward to it. And thank you guys for do, taking time out on your Saturday and Kelly for getting out of the ocean to come <laughs> on this and, uh, and join us. So that's it for the morning skate. Uh, we hope to see you Tuesday. Uh, hashtag Boston Unites. Let's fill the TD Garden. And as always, go Huskies. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Brian. Hey, thank you guys. Thank you. This is great. And.